Show of hands, who would be so humble to share in the comments that maybe you need a little bit of help with crosswind landings? I'm typing in me in there right now. What is happening, m 0 Nation? Jason Shepard here, and I've been there before, and wasn't there too long ago either, needing some help with some crosswind landings. Hey, before we dive into this video and into the airplane, be sure to like and subscribe on YouTube and Facebook, and don't just stop with loving this video. Uh, make sure you check out the entire online ground school. Go to m0atrial.com. Written test prep, check ride prep, and beyond that, we're in the business of making you a safe real world pilot. So if you're looking for written, check ride, and by the way, you wanna be safe when you're flying with your spouse, or safe when you're flying with your kids, or those 300 paying passengers behind you, that's what M-Zero is all about. M-Zero-A-Trial.com to check out the ground school and see if my teaching style works for you. Also, don't forget uh, the giveaway we have of the package from our friends at my Go Flight. Amazing flight bag. It's the flight bag that I fly with. M-Zero-A-Contest.com to enter to win, no strings attached. I'll be announcing the winner on June 29th at 8 p.m. Eastern time, where I'll be teaching the secret to perfect landings, and I'll be doing that live right here on YouTube, right here on Facebook. So really look forward to seeing you all there as well. Save that date. There's a Facebook event created for that as well. You can probably go find. I'll ask the team to link to the description in there as well. So crosswind takeoffs and crosswind landings. And I've got a story. And unfortunately, we all have stories. Fortunately, I'll say we all have stories uh, to share. But this one for me is not all that long ago. And I was flying a Cirrus up to Ocala and a cold front had just, just ripped right through. And Ocala is always a tough airport. It's a 1836. But there's also an 826 runway, but it's so small. It's 50 feet wide. It's 3,000 some feet long. It's just small and it never really gets used. 1836 is the main runway, which is tough, a north-south runway in Florida, when the winds are either off the Gulf or off the Atlantic. So there's almost always crosswinds. And it was really windy that day. It was gusting into the 20s. And I was actually leaving Rex Air in Naples when Colin, and uh, you saw, I, I did some flying with Colin in a video many months ago. Colin is the son of one of my uh, partners in Rex Air, Keith. And Colin was working line service that day. It was a weekend. And uh, it was, again, really gusty. And Colin said something so profound to me that, that didn't hit me till after the fact. And here, again, I'm sharing the story with you, 10,000 flight hours, everything else, and I am still learning. Colin, who is now an instrument pilot, he was getting the plane ready for me, and he said, I'm surprised you're going flying today. And I thought, wow, Colin's a 70-hour, you know, 80-hour 80 instrument pilot, and he's got, first off, the boldness to say that, and, and the humility at the same time to go, wow, I know what Jason stands for. It's really windy today. I'm surprised you're going flying today, Jason. And that didn't hit me until I was already flying, unfortunately. I'm going into Ocala, and Tower cleared me for a landing on 1.8. And I remember looking uh, at the maximum crosswind component for the Cirrus. I wasn't anywhere near it, but it was still going to be a, you know, a 16-knot crosswind for 1.8. I'm thinking... Gosh, that's a lot of crosswind. And, but you know, Tower cleared me for it. So they're using 1.8. I might as well end up using 1.8. Meanwhile, the winds are like, I, I don't know exactly what they were, 2.6.0. There's a runway 2.6, by the way. It's just narrow and short. And I ended up getting lined up for 1.8. I'm flying one of these right, kind of crapping on down. I got to about 200 feet, and I'm looking out the run, to maintain center line, I'm looking out the window, it seems like. At 200 feet, I said, this is ridiculous. This is exactly what Colin meant when he said, I'm surprised you're going flying today, Jason. And I went around. And I went around and came back around and landed um, runway 26, which wasn't my favorite choice, especially in a uh, SR-22, only 3,000 feet of runway. Plenty of runway for the airplane, but utilizes all your piloting skills with that. You know, I share that. And again, that story happened just a few months ago. I am always learning and I make mistakes, and I sometimes miss those clues, like when someone says, I'm surprised you're going flying today is a new red flag for me to go, huh, 
if they don't think it's good enough to go and fly in, I might want to rethink this thing here as well. So I know I went on for a little bit. Let's get into the actual content here. But maybe that was the content. Maybe that was the message that somebody needed to hear. You see, this crosswind technique, and it is a technique, it needs to be practiced initially with an instructor. You know, if you screw this up, you're going to potentially carry side loads on the aircraft if it's not loaded appropriately here. You're going to come in and if you're my center line, you may side load and pull a tire off the bead or off the rim or beat up the landing gear of the airplane there as well. Crosswind correction, by the way, has to be maintained throughout the pattern. We think about it just during taxi, and some of you are neglecting your taxi crosswind stuff, right, as well, um, or takeoff or landing, but you know, on downwind, you've got a crosswind. You're either getting pushed away from the runway or you're getting blown towards it. On base, you could have a headwind or you could have a tailwind. Those are all different factors that we forget about when talking about a crosswind. And just like I said, you should always be ready to go around, but go around. Consider a different runway. Consider a different airport. And that crossed my mind too. Okay, Willison has a runway 23. Maybe I'll just go over there and ask who I'm meeting to meet me over there instead. Consider diverting to an airport that's more suitable uh, for the current winds. So let's talk about this here. Let's talk through a crosswind takeoff and I'll take you up to the airplane to show you a crosswind landing here as well. Crosswind takeoff. First off, on your taxi, you, you go ahead, you turn into the wind. If the wind is coming from this side, I turn my yoke into that wind. I'm talking, you know, standard tricycle gear aircraft now. Tail dragger is a little different and such. If for some reason I have a tailwind, uh, a quartering tailwind from back here, I dive away from tailwinds. A regular crosswind or a, a quartering headwind you turn into, if it's quartering tailwind behind me, I dive and away. Anything else is just, you can leave the controls neutral and turn into them. Leave the elevator neutral, I mean, and turn into it. Crosswind takeoff, I line up, Please get perfectly on center line. You're going to need it, and you should hold it the entire time, all the way into the wind. Full power. As I accelerate, I got my hand on the throttle. As I accelerate, I, and, and as I speed up, I'm slowly straightening that yoke up. Or in a Cirrus, I'm slowly straightening that stick up, whatever that may be. Or whatever airplane you're flying, a, a stick, slowly bringing it back to center. You might even take off with your yoke kind of like this. And you may even, there's been crosswinds. Who's ever had a crosswind where you take off and pew, the airplane crabs, weather vanes right on into it because it's such a good crosswind. That'll happen to you as well. Now, we, we neglect the takeoff um, because everyone wants to focus on the landing, but that takeoff is so crucial. You can flat spot tires, you can skid tires, all sorts of stuff. But when coming into land, I'm gonna ask you a question. Maybe you'll leave me a comment down below. Are you a crabber or are you a side slipper? And if you have no clue what I'm talking about, well, we're, we'll teach you real quick. I really teach two methods, and then we'll go to the video here in the airplane real quick. There's the side slip or the wing low method, which is where we keep the upwind wing, so the wind's coming this way, low to counter the wing. However, this leads to a cross control situation. So I'm very mindful of this at low altitudes. Student pilots need to use caution. I personally teach the crab method, which is crab into the wind. Uh, I think it makes it easier to maintain center line, stay coordinated, avoid being uncoordinated, but it does require the skill during that transition phase, that round out phase, to transition to that slip on landing in a way, because your upwind wheel in a crosswind should touch down first. And it's hard to go from here to be parallel with the runway so you don't side load it. And you know the real truth? Even I, although I call myself a crabber, I use a combination of the two to fly safely. Let me take you up to the airplane and let me show it to you real quick. Let's start, let's work our way through this here together. Using every bit of runway like you guys know I like to do. Coming on out, ailerons into the wind, as you can see. Smoothly applying some full power. And my ailerons stay like this. Maintain directional control with the rudders. As I'm building up my airspeed, I'm babying some of that control out, babying some of that control out, and we 
are up and flying. <laughs> it is gusty today. Jeez. And we are getting bumped around like crazy. Look at that crab angle I had to put in here as we're climbing up and out. Flying on through here. I want to make sure I'm looking this way. I want to make sure I'm maintaining flying that straight on out. Whew, it's gusty. Getting bumped all around here. Maintaining that. And maintain this crab angle. A big part of this is going to be managing our traffic pattern as we come on through as well. It's going to prove to be so important. Now, notice too, once I start and I make that left crosswind, I'm going to be turning right into the wind. Watch what that will do to my vertical speed as I'm now ready. I'm going to turn my left crosswind, which is basically now turning right on into the wind. Remembering what the wind is doing to me in each little phase of flight here. All right, turning in and look at my vertical speed, 1,000 feet per minute as we're coming. I didn't change my pitch, anything like that. Just turning into the wind, helping increase that climb. Pattern L2 is going to come real quick, and you're going to look out and go, I'm not covering as much distance across the ground. So where I typically turn downwind at something like 1,000 feet, I'm not going to turn yet because I'm, I'm at the altitude, but I'm not covering as much distance across the ground. So I'm still going to hold my traffic pattern altitude here for just a second. And I'm going to hold this until I'm about where I normally am, which is actually out over this way quite a bit. So I'm going to fly this. Then I'm going to remember the wind is going to try to push me back towards the runway as well. And I'm kind of roll through that turn, but I'm not going to roll perfectly 90 degrees on out because I know the wind is going to work to push me back towards that runway. So I'm going to hold, I'm holding like a two, two, zero heading right now. It's crazy as that sounds. Flight two, zero, three, but I'm okay. flying this way. Three, six, clear Even I'm holding this two, two, zero here. Heading. I'll call him midfield here in just a second. And two, three, Mike Zulu is midfield for a full stop. Three mics of the runway three six clear to land. The wind is two nine zero at one four gust two four. Three six clear to land. Thank you. Two three mics of I appreciate those wind checks because when you heard the ATIS, that was uh, forty five minutes old. In that case, we're waiting for a new one to come on out here. Maintain this. I'm making sure I'm not getting pushed in and creeping into the runway. Like I said, I'm maintaining that nice crab angle here. I'm coming up and being my touchdown point now. I need to get down. Carburetor heat comes on. I'll bring some power back, and I am using zero in the flap department. There's no chance I'm using any flaps in this case. Flaps, what do they do? Yes, they slow us down, but they make that wing surface area bigger. They add another component for some of that wind to get up underneath, and it's not going to be good news coming in in a crosswind or in gusty conditions, and we have both here today. I'm going to slow this on down and just manage it using power. Coming on down. Now, this is very important. I'm about to turn base. Where's the wind going to be, right? It's going to be behind me. So it's going to push me. This is why we do turns around a point. It's going to push me very, very quickly through this turn. I am not going to have much of a base. So I'm actually bringing my powers almost back to idle here because I know I'm not going to have much of a base. I know I still need to get down a little bit, and the wind is just going to push me right off through here. And I'm rolling out, and I have a heck of a tailwind here right now. Got a ground speed of like a 102 here, but I'm just I'm showing about... 85 indicated, right? We're coming through. Final looks clear. I've got some birds out in front of me here. I need to watch. There they are. He already cleared me to land. I'm not looking. Now, by the way, I need, to, I need to time this. I need to turn a little bit early based on where the wind is. I'm not looking to hit a point. I'm not looking for a gorgeous landing. I'm looking for a safe landing on center line to put that upwind wheel down and roll this airplane so on out, so I'm looking radar. for it here. Report a two mile Look how I'm skidding, it looks like I'm skidding through this turn as it's kind of blowing me on through here. I've got a little bit of power, and I need, I need that power to keep coming on down. And we're working our way on down. I've got a nice crab angle. I teach the crab to side slip here. So we're coming on in. I've got a nice little crab angle. And then we're going to go ahead, and I'll put that upwind wheel down first. I can see the wind sock. He's exactly right. If anything, it has switched quite a bit to that 280. Maintain this coming on down, babying some power out. Keeping that nose coming down, and just flying all the way down. I still have power in, even right here. 
I'm going into my side slip. I still have a little bit of power in. That power's back, 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 back. Now I'm back to idle. I'm holding it. Just riding the waves, riding the waves. Holding it here, holding it here, waiting for that to come on down. There's my upwind wheel. There's my next crosswind correction comes in and let it roll. Just let it roll, ride it right on out. Uh, two, a mic is correction. Three, Mike Zulu. Turn right next to actually at Alpha Six. Engine contact round point four. Alpha Six point four. Thank you. Two, three, Mike Zulu. And we'll ride this on out. Now I'm slowly getting on the brakes. Applying a little back pressure, a little aerodynamic braking here, but I don't want to get flying again. Be very careful of that. And then we turn off and we'll contact ground here. Crosswind landings, they're going to take time. And let me tell you the honest truth. I was terrified of them as a private pilot. I then went to instrument where you just do a bunch of go arounds. So I didn't get to work on those. It wasn't until I became a commercial pilot that I began to get comfortable with crosswind landings. You know, one very wise instructor taught me that the airplane is never done flying. When you land, you maintain that crosswind control through that rollout and you better maintain it through that taxi. That very wise instructor told me, Jason, fly it all the way to the hangar. And I want you to adopt that same philosophy. All the way to the tie down spot, all the way to the ramp, all the way to the hangar, whatever that is, you fly it all the way. Don't get complacent. Don't go, oh, I landed. I'm gonna text my spouse, I'm down safe. You can do that when you're at the hangar safe. So you don't hit anything or anybody. That prop's still spinning, it could hurt people. You fly that thing all the way to the hangar. Hey, I hope you're gonna join us on June 29th for the Secret to Perfect Landings live at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on YouTube, right here on Facebook. Like and subscribe here as well. And there's a Facebook event posted as well in the link in the description below. Can't wait to read your comments. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see ya.